Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of CNC Base Camp. Hey, what I've got here is a tote that was made about 15, 16 years ago for Shop Notes Magazine. And we made it not on a CNC, but using a plunge router and the table saw. Well, what I was after then was I wanted to look at the old tab and slot toys that many of us got over Christmas. They were made of pasteboard or sheet metal. I always loved that way of construction. There's no glue in it. It all interlocks together tightly. Got a few options. Dividers. There's a compartment here with a flip-up lid. And there's a little compartment here for different tools. And you can interchange it all, so you can customize the unit to exactly what you want. So I thought it'd be fun if we went ahead and took another look at this coat and came up with four additional designs. So whatever your style, whatever you need, I think we've got a tote for you. This episode is sponsored by Inventables. Design it, build it, sell it. Learn more at inventables.com. Well, the first tote we're going to build is a curved sided tote. And I think you can see the lineage and how it comes from our original shop notes tote. So what we have then is bottom, two sides which interlock into that bottom, our two ends which will capture both the bottom and the sides, a handle, and the handle will be kind of fun because we're going to capture the handle with a wedge. The handle is two parts of plywood, which will be glued together, forming the cavity for the wedge. Now on this particular tote, I have two boxes, one on either end. Now you can, of course, modify this to suit your needs, but I have found these little lidded boxes to be super handy for all sorts of small items. So this is a great tote for around the house, or picture framing supplies, anything like that, small nails. I also have a tote very similar to this. <laughs> I use it in my office and keep all my pens, pencils, flash drives, spare ink cartridges for the printer and all that sort of thing in it. So super handy and versatile, and that's gonna be our first tote, the curved sided tote. Well, next up is this two tiered tote. And what's handy about this is we have two separate levels and that really helps keep things organized. And you know what? You can find your nail set and your pencils up in that top compartment. You don't have to go digging through the hammers, the wrenches, and everything else. So it's a super handy design for all sorts of different things. As with the other tote, we have a bottom, two sides. The ends lock everything in place. They'll also capture the top area here and a nice curved handle, and as with the other one, the handle is held in place with a simple wedge. And so there's a look at the two-tiered tote. Let's move on to our next one. Now we're gonna be a little bit adventurous with this tote. As you can see, the sides are set at an angle, and that definitely causes some complications with a CNC project. With this tote, I'm trying to create an elegant look. The ends are actually a lamination of three individual pieces of plywood to give it a little bit of a sculpted, a little bit of a deco feel to it with these waveforms. One advantage also is that it gives us a three quarter of an inch in thickness and that really captures the handle. So if you want to load this tote down with all sorts of sweet potatoes or anything heavy, it's going to hold them. This tote also has a curved handle, like our others, only instead of a two-part handle that's glued together with wedges at the end, this one is going to be solid wood. I think the solid wood is going to be a nice complement to our otherwise plywood tote. So something a little bit different, and we'll talk a little bit more about the joinery for the sides and how they attach to the bottom when we're ready to assemble. Well, our final tote has a distinct green and green styling. You can see the finger joints on the ends, and I had to put a cloud lift in there for the handle. What's great about this tote is it's very open. 
And I'm not showing it in here, but there's room along the sides for all sorts of tools to stand vertically. So when we get this tote done, we'll talk a little bit more about how we can organize it using some simple blocks of wood, which will stand against the interior and provide some pockets for chisels, a square, a pair of pliers, all sorts of things. Now, like the other totes, bottom sides, the ends lock everything together, and finally these uprights that hold the handle will lock the ends in place. So every one part locks another part in. And that's kind of the fun, and that's kind of the strength and durability of these totes. So there we go. We're going to start with the Shop Notes tote. We're going to work our way through, and we're going to have five totes that are distinct, that are individual, and I think they'll be a lot of fun and a great utility for you. So let's go to the CNC machine and get started. Well, the first step in cutting the parts for our curved sided tote is going to be to cut the pockets for the wedges on the inside of each of the handle halves. Once the CNC has completed that, we'll then proceed with a profile cut and cut out all the individual parts for the tote. I'm using a 1 8 inch bit because the smaller size bit will create smaller dog bones and therefore a cleaner overall look for our project. I'm using a straight bit because that's going to give me the best surface, the best and cleanest cut. An upcut bit is going to tear things out badly on the top. A downcut bit is going to tear things below. The straight bit is what we want for the best quality cut. The two-tiered tote requires one quarter sheet of plywood, and then we'll come back and cut an eighth sheet for the handles and for the sides for the top. So let's go ahead and get started cutting the rest of the parts. Well, let's talk a little bit about the materials that we're using to make these totes. What I'm using is Baltic birch plywood. And what makes it ideal for this is five plies. So not only does it look good, but it's strong, relatively lightweight, great product to work with. One thing I wish is that I could use some plywood that has some pretty veneers on it. So this is a piece of cherry. The only thing is it's MDF core. It's really hard to find plywood hardwood plywood that has actually plies in it. It's all MDF core now. It works pretty well, but it's a little bit heavy, not quite as strong. If you were to use this type of plywood, one thing I would suggest is that perhaps instead of through tenons, as we have here, you might only go 3 16ths of an inch deep with the tenons, leaving 1 16th of an inch of material across the face. And that's going to give it a little bit of extra strength. The same is true if you're working with solid wood. These would all look great with solid wood, but we do need to be mindful of the joinery and mindful of the weaknesses that solid wood can have in this application. Another thing that you can do, if we were to look at the tenon on the bottom here, instead of one large tenon, you can break it into several small tenons. That will increase the strength of a solid wood connection. You may also want to think about, of course, increasing the thickness of the solid wood. You will need to go into the files and expand out the mortises and work with things a little bit. But chances are, quarter inch solid wood will work fine. Now for this tote, you will need to go ahead and plan on a thicker handle. This one's only a quarter of an inch, which is fine for the plywood. You'll notice on some of the other totes, I went ahead and upped those all to half inch thick solid wood. So you want to carry through with that. So, a couple of different choices. Baltic birch, probably the best for strength and durability. Any MDF core hardwood plywood will look very good. Just make a few modifications, and if you want to go with solid wood, go for it. Just take a look at the joinery. The parts we're going to cut out now are for the garden tote, the one with the waves on the ends. And I'm kind of excited to see how that looks. I'm continuing to use a straight 1 8 inch bit 
for the quality of cut and because it can get into those tight corners really well. Well, it's time to cut parts for our final tote, the green and green version. The first thing we're going to do is cut pocket cuts, which will be the mortises for the tenons in the bottom. When that's done, we'll begin to cut the profile and get all the parts cut out. To cut all the plywood, we've used an eighth inch straight bit, and that produces a premium cut in plywood. Now that I'm cutting solid wood, I'm going to switch bits. I'm going to use an upcut bit, and it simply has better qualities in terms of pulling sawdust out of the curve. And so I think it's a better choice for solid wood. Well, our CNC work is done, so now it's time to start assembling all of our totes. So let me run through the procedure with you real quick. First off, all of our parts are going to have a little bit of fuzz on them, so I'm just going to take a random orbital sander and clean them up a little bit. With the sanding done, we now need to deal with how our tabs fit into the slots. As you see on the side here, these tabs are rounded to match the filleted end of the mortise. On the bottom here, you'll see that this tab is not rounded, and that gives you two choices. I like the look of the rounded ends of the tabs. I think it's a little cleaner. When it comes to CNC joinery, I'm really not crazy about looking at dog bones and T-bones and all that sort of thing. It does take a little extra effort, but it looks nice. So let's talk about how to do that. I've got a sample bottom here, and the easiest way is just to use a coarse file. So this is a 12 inch, and all you have to do is gently round over each of the sides like that. It's fast and it's easy. Another way that you can round over the ends of these tabs is by using a router. So I have a mini router table here, and this is a 1 8 inch round over bit, and it's a solid point, and that means it really gets into tight corners. You can see I've used a 1 quarter inch dog mowing to eliminate the fillet in each of these tabs, and that gives me a little bit of room. I've got the fence set so that I can run the edge of each of these tabs against my router bit without having it go too deep. And so there you can see we can round over the edges of all these tabs very quickly and easily, and it does it pretty accurately. So now it's time to go ahead and assemble one of our totes. They all follow a fairly similar pattern. This happens to be the tote with two tiers. The first thing I'm going to do is take my bottom and fit it to one of the sides. And I've already done that with the upper level. So now I'm going to take one of my ends, and in order to get the end to pivot in more easily, I've used a block plane, and I've taken off a little bit of this tab. I'll begin to insert the tab, and at the same time, engage the tenons on the side. And we just fold it up, and knock it in place. With this end in place, I'm now going to take my completed upper level tray and tap it in. So there we are. Now we'll start the next side. Same process. Insert it into the bottom. Begin to pivot it, engage the tenons on the lower tray, and at this point I need to pause and get the handle. Because of the shape of the handle, we can't insert it all the way through. It has to be inserted during this assembly process. So I'm going to go ahead and get it started. And now we'll continue to seat the different parts. All right, 
right, we've got our bottom, our sides, our top tray, we've got our ends, our handle in place. All that's left is to insert some little wedges that are going to help hold the handle in place and kind of add a nice little detail along the way. The wedges also will help keep the ends from ever coming open. So this tote can actually be assembled dry without glue. So with that, let's go ahead and gather in all the totes and take a look at the finished product. Well, here's all our finished totes. So let's begin the tour. First off, we have the original tote from Shop Notes 91. Versatile, easy to make, a lidded compartment, room for tools. This curved sided tote, you can see the lineage from the Shop Notes tote. It's simple, it's direct, it's got lots of storage space, and I've really found the little lidded compartments to be super handy. Here we have a tote with two different levels. So you've got no excuse but to be able to find your measuring tape, your pencils, and your nail set up here. All the things that would be hopelessly lost in the clutter below. This is a fun tote. I'm calling this the garden tote. And it's fun because we've got a little bit of a sculptural touch here on the ends. It's very solid, very sturdy. And there's a challenge in the fact that the tenons fit in at a slight angle to the mortises on the sides. And it does require to use your block plane and take off a little of the top surface of the tenon to get it to fit. For those of you who are a little more ambitious, you can certainly cut angled mortises into the sides for a perfect glove fit. And I think we might show that in a future episode of Base Camp because it's a fun technique. Our last tote is this green and green inspired tote. It's very open, very easy to access all the space. For this one, I think what I'm going to do is take some pieces of lumber here, and this is basswood because it's very light, and I'm going to make some tool holders that will fit in along the edges. Now what I need to do is lay out what tools I would like it to hold, and what I will do is simply using a table saw, a router, or our CNC machine, I'll cut slots vertically down through these blocks of wood so all my tools can simply drop in. So you can customize it to your tools, to what you need. It really makes, I think, for a very attractive, very useful tote. So there we go, five different totes. Now, of course, you can find all the DXF files, some instructions, and an article on our website at Woodsmith CNC Base Camp. So, thanks so much for watching today. I hope you'll build some of these and send me a picture. And I look forward to seeing you next month in another episode of CNC Base Camp. Well, recently I've been working on a really fun project for Woodsmith Magazine, my, my day job, and that is a wooden clock. And what's so fascinating about a wooden clock and a CNC machine is you get to make gears, and gears are super cool. They're really very complex. The type of gear that I use for the clock is called a volute gear, and it's your classic machinery gear. It's meant to have a very solid, heavy base of the tooth for strength, and that it's designed so that the teeth remain in contact for a long time so you get smooth, chatter-free operation of gearing. And there's a lot of other designs of gears as well, but being a classic design, I went ahead and decided to use the volute gear. So, how do I go about doing that for a clock? Because for this clock, I needed a 64 tooth, a 60, a 32, a 30, an 8, and a 10 tooth. Well, the easy way to do this is to use a gear generating program, and you can find these free or purchase one online. The one I'm going to show you I purchased, and it's from woodgears.ca. And it's pretty neat, so let me show you around a little bit. First, I have gear properties, things like the spacing of the teeth, the shaft spacing, center point to center point, which is very useful, very important. The contact angle of the teeth, how steep they are. I can change from an involute gear to a pin gear. If you think about the gearing in old mills, such as a water wheel driven mill or a windmill, very often they'll use this type of gear. And it'll be, they're typically called a lantern gear. So that's very interesting. Going back to involute gears that I'm using on the clock, we can switch over and play with the number of spokes in the wheel, kind of get an idea of what sort of look we want. 
You can also switch over to a chain and sprocket if you feel like it. So all sorts of different properties. And the nice thing is the program figures out the faces of all the teeth because it's actually pretty complicated. There's a mathematical formula involved because with involute gears, it's essentially as if you were unwinding a string that were wrapped around a cylinder. And so the radius of each tooth changes from the root of the tooth to the tip. So they're not easy to do. And a gear generating program makes it super simple. So if you have any projects you'd like to do, it's an awesome thing. I've got a couple things I'd like to do for the show eventually. One is I'd like to do some automatons using gears. Also, I've seen some pretty cool face vices that are twin screw linked with gears. I think we're gonna do one of those. So I think there's all sorts of really great projects that can be done with a gear generator. Now, one fun thing about gears is they're not all round. I decided to have some fun and I purchased a download from Clayton Boyer Designs and it's called Weird Gears. And I got about eight or nine different gear patterns that are really fun. So I went ahead and made a couple of them and I'll show you them. Here's one that I love, Square Gears. Who would have thought? Here I have elliptical gears. And finally, these are called Nautilus gears. So gears don't have to be round. And the interesting thing is there's actually useful applications for some of these odd shaped gears because they change the properties of what's going on. As an example, the interesting thing about these square gears is that when I turn the first one, if I'm turning that at a consistent speed, the other ones are not consistent. They speed up and they slow down. And sometimes things like that have useful applications for machinery. So they're great fun, but you can find them in real life too. So there you go. A brief introduction to gears, to gear generating programs and some of the odd shapes. I'm hooked. I want to make more clocks, more projects. So we're going to revisit this again in the future. This episode is sponsored by Inventables. Design it, build it, sell it. Learn more at inventables.com. <laughs>